I'm one of the lucky few to be invited to the Fox Theatre in Detroit, Michigan, where I'm going to see the Chevrolet Silverado EV up close and personal at a one-on-one -on -one briefing event. And in case you're wondering, unlike CES, which just mandated everyone wore masks and were COVID free on day one and COVID vaccinated, myself and Michael had tests before we went and we had a rapid test before entering into this building. Everyone's following CDC guidelines, everyone's staying safe. So let's take a look and see what we've got. At the front end of this truck, you'll notice it's very different to the regular Silverado. This is apparently to help make the airflow over the truck and make a better aerodynamic impact on the vehicle, which means it will use less energy going down the road. It's almost obligatory now to have this lighting element on the front of the truck. Now, this is only present in the RST version of the Silverado EV, as is the light up badge. If you go for the work truck, you want a more manly, robust vehicle, you don't get any namby-pamby lights on the front trunk. This is not actually called a frunk on this vehicle. I can't remember what they've called it, but it's certainly not frunk, but it is. It's a front trunk, it's a frunk. Slightly smaller than it is on some of the other vehicles in the space, but still a great place to store equipment. One thing you can't help but notice are these massive 24 inch wheels. They come as standard on the RST version of this truck, though the work truck gets a more utilitarian steel wheel affair. And of course, this vehicle has four way steering or four wheel steering. It can do the sideways thing. I'm not sure if they're gonna call it crab mode for the Silverado EV, but it essentially has the same underpinnings as the Hummer EV. So everything the Hummer EV can do this truck should be capable of doing too. Being a prototype vehicle and a display vehicle, there's actually an animation playing on both the center screen and the driver information display. But it looks like it's set up very nicely inside for both front passenger and driver. The seats are power adjustable and there's a good sound system we're promised inside. This is kind of two-tone affair here that I'm not sure I'm a big fan of. There's kind of an illumination in this little storage bin just above the glove box. The interior of this vehicle is designed to be both utilitarian but also comfortable. So let's move to the back where we see the large legroom that is available thanks to this truck's platform. In the rear, you've got plenty of legroom because this interior cabin is positively massive even for a pickup. Right now, one of the rear seats is down in the 60-40 configuration, so you can have one rear seat passenger, and then the load bay can pass through. Obviously, this was first debuted by GM on the Avalanche, and we first saw it in an electric vehicle in the Bollinger B1. It's great to see, and a lot of you have been very positive about it. I'd love to get inside and show you, but we're not allowed inside this vehicle because it is just a show truck but meet me at the rear and i'll get to show you just how big that load base space is it's now a fairly standard feature for chevy trucks to have an integrated step but it can also operate as a way of ensuring your load doesn't fall out the back of the truck so if you're carrying four by eights or anything like that you can actually secure the load with the back of the tailgate. In the back of the bed, you've got three power outlets on one side and two on the other for a total of 10.2 kilowatts of optional offboard power. Of course, you can also charge another vehicle using the Chevrolet Silverado EV, which is a great feature that I'm hoping more pickups and more electric vehicles bring on board. Here, you can see just how massive that rear load bay is. It's five foot 11, just in the actual bed but then if you fold down those rear seats you do have a positively cavernous amount of space i'm really excited about this because it means that you could potentially set this up as a camper if you put a camper shell on top of this then you could literally precondition the whole of your truck bed while you're on a camping trip and that's going to be a lot easier than getting out the tent pegs believe me so there you have it, our first impressions and walk around of the Silverado EV. Sadly, we won't get to drive it yet, but I'm hoping we can come back in the future and make it happen. And if you want more from the Silverado EV, keep your eyes peeled for our interviews with some of the team responsible for Chevrolet's first mass-produced all-electric truck. 
If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and to our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, for longer takes and behind the scenes fun. Thanks on behalf of the entire crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Jason Bordor, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Rahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hennesley, and Ian. If you're feeling left out, you can join Patreon at the link below, or you can show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. There are links below. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving.